Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now, as you've probably gathered, I'm playing quite a lot of BeamNG Drive at the moment, and genuinely, I am having an absolute blast. But, from reading some of the comments, reading Discord, it's clear to me that some of you guys aren't playing it because you think it's a bit of a pain in the backside to set up, and there's too many controls to configure. And that's true. There are lots and lots of things that you can control, map, in the game, but there's only a few that you really need to get up and running and have some fun. Now, I'm no BeamNG Drive expert by any stretch of the imagination. I'm really not. I'm just going to highlight what I think is important to get you in the game as quick as you can and know what to do roughly whilst you're in the game. So if you find this video useful, please let me know in the comments, leave a like, and if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. So enough talking, let's jump into the game. Right, so you fired up BeamMG Drive. The first thing we want to get sorted is the controls. Map your wheel, map your gamepad, whatever you're going to do. So we'll go down to options, and then we'll go to controls on the left-hand side. And then we're going to click on vehicle. Now this is where we can set our steering wheel, pedal, axis, etc. Now, you can see I've already set mine up. It's got the axis on there. So we'll just get rid of that one for now, the throttle, and that should disappear. There we go. So we don't have an axis mapped to the throttle. So this are the keyboard buttons by default. We want to add a throttle now we could click on up and replace that one delete that one but we're not going to we're going to leave up as default we're going to click the plus to create a new binding and then it's just waiting for me to press the accelerator which i'll do now there we go and that's the accelerator linearity on one because we want it to be nice and linear so we could change that for a curve if we wanted put that down to one and no dead zone, then we go down to the bottom and click apply. And we do that for the brake and for the clutch. Now the steering, some people click these by mistake. We want to use the axis, and I'll click on mine for now, and you can see as I turn my steering wheel to the left and right, that moves, and that's the end of the steering wheel travel. Now again, we want that to be linear, so we have that on one, and we change the filter to wheel that is it then click apply do that for your wheel and all of your pedals and your handbrake if you've got one now your force feedback for your steering wheel etc is at the top click that one and then to get into it you click on the axis there which we've just set up and then that will pop up this force feedback menu now you can have a look at mine this is what i have mine set to now so my steering angle is 1440 it's linear, the force feedback's enabled, and the force feedback actually on BMNG is quite strong, so I've got mine down to 80, smoothing at 120. You can have a look at my settings and copy those if you wish. You can change these actually when the game's running, jump into the menu and change it on the fly, then just remember to click apply. So go back to the controls menu, and we're gonna have a look at some of the buttons that I have set up. So. Got my accelerator, brake and clutch. I've got my shift up and shift down. So you can use your paddles on your wheel or your sequential shifter, whichever you want. I've got a H pattern shifter set up. So I've got all my gears all configured on my shifter. Now again, you just come down here and map whatever you want exactly the same way. So left signal, we'll get rid of that one. Uh, so you just click on the delete, remove binding. I've got these set up as, as my paddle on my wheel. because I've got a sequential shifter set up. So left signal, again, we press the plus, create new binding. Then we just press my left paddle and then click apply. Dead easy to set up controls in BeamNG, but there are quite a lot you can set up, as you can see. Don't let that overwhelm you. You don't need that many. Now, down here, you can see we've got toggle differential mode, toggle four-wheel drive status, 
You can map buttons to those, which I have done. However, you can actually click on the UI in the simulator to toggle those. I'll show you that now very quickly. So we're in the sim and we've chosen a proper four wheel drive vehicle. And as you can see down at the bottom, there are some controls that you can click these ones here. Now we can start the engine if we click that. I'm going to hold it down. And then these here are your front and rear differentials. Well, all you need to do is click those and that's everything locked. Unclick. And then we've got your high and low range. As you can see on the left hand side, it's telling us what we are changing. Dead easy. Now the next set of controls we're going to look at is under gameplay. Now, this is where we reset our car and all that kind of stuff. Now, you don't need to have all of these toggled. There's only a couple of these that we actually need. So we reset the car and we want to recover the car. Now, We'll go into the simulator. So, if we drive a short distance. Um, where we're going to go. We'll drive over here and we'll put it in between these cars here. Now. If we want to recover our car back over there, we could press the R key by default. And that would put us where we started. But what if we don't want to go back where we started from? For example, say we're climbing up a big hill and we don't want to recover all the way back to the start. And we'll just pull over here. What you can do is if you press the insert key, that would reset all the physics. For example, if we had damage, press the insert key, that would repair the car. So let's just drive into something and get some damage. Like so. Nice bit of damage there. And recover, so we press insert. But that will recover our car where it is now. Then we've got to start it up. Then we've got to reverse it back. Blah, 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 blah. Well, what you can do is we'll do the same again. cause the same kind of damage there we go but we're going to hold down the insert key this time and you can see we can just let go when we want and then it's put us back there the vehicle completely repaired so the insert button is for recover vehicle remember you can press the insert key once that will re repair all the damage but it will leave your car where it is if you hold the insert button that will then rewind where you've just driven and then you can release the key at a place where you're happy to continue. Now, if you just wanted to continue where you were, what you can do is a thing called Node Grabber. Now, if you press your left control key, you can see all of these points on the vehicle light up. Now, these are all grabbable parts of your vehicles. If I click hold of one, hover over any one, and hold my left mouse button, I can then drag the car wherever I want. The same on the bonnet there, I can lift it up. But just bear in mind, if you're touching parts that are quite flimsy, they might come off. So there's the light. Oh, let's throw that away. There you go. Now, what you can do, if we're trying to pull a vehicle and it's too heavy, we can't pull it. If you look on the little bar that's popped up there, force... 5,700. If I hold the left mouse button, if I scroll up with my middle mouse button, I've got much more force to lift the car. I can pretty much do whatever I want with it. And now I could probably pull these off with ease. There we go. Rip those off. Probably the same with a the, with the wheel. If I, if I pull that hard enough, click the middle mouse button and up the force. Then, I mean, look, I can I can pretty much drag that wherever I want. And that's caused significant damage to the car. Now, this is where we would press insert just once, and it will stay here. But the car will be repaired. So that is left control. And that means that you can pull on any part of the car. But just remember the strength there. We're going to reduce that to 
40%, for example, and that should be enough to move your car wherever you want it. If you've got it stuck in a ditch, and you can just drag it round and move it. So that comes under Show Node Grabber Nodes, which is left control. You can map a button to it, so that shows them left control. Then you grab it with your left mouse button. The node grabber strength is the middle mouse button. Now we'll quickly jump into the camera settings now. I have a button mapped to change the camera and I don't have all of the cameras enabled. I only have a few and I'll show you which ones in a moment. But one of the important things is toggle free camera. Now shift and C. So if we press shift and C, we can then hold the right mouse button and move around and then use keys W, A, S, D to go wherever we like on the map, anywhere at all. And if you wanted to put a vehicle over here, for example, you can put the camera here and then you can press escape, vehicles, we'll just spawn any old car, that one there, we'll click spawn new and that will put a car there. We're still in free camera mode. But we've still got our green car over there. You can see, wow, cool tyres. Then we just press C to go back into the normal camera mode. And to change vehicles, press Tab. And then obviously you can map your buttons for moving the cameras if you wish. These are the important ones to move the car seat. So tilt, forward, backwards, up and down. That's all you really need when you're in the cockpit. So we'll go into my camera settings now. I only have, well, usually two, orbit and driver. It just makes things much more simple for me. Now, if I go into cockpit view there, you scroll down, you can see the field of view there. I have mine at 65, sometimes a bit less. And here you can increase it. So there's a little bit of delay there. So we'll put it on 65, and then you've got your lock to horizon slider there. I, some, I mainly have that on zero, to be honest. But we'll put it on about 20%-ish. There we go. And that's all you need to do. Dead easy. And then you've got your external mode for your camera. So if we did have the external mode tick there, and we're going to external mode, you scroll down. That is always TV. So this is a TV camera. If we move it across to always fan, then that will change as if it's a spectator watching the footage. I have mine on always TV. And there's a, a scale there where you can just change it to your heart's content. I have mine on always TV. And if you want to make some nice B-roll shots, smooth movement and rotation for your cameras. Now, the rest of the options, you can just have a look and a tinker at your heart content for the slow motion and all the other good stuff. I don't really bother too much with that. The only thing that I've changed really in the camera settings is if we go to my cockpit camera, you can see the steering wheel is there. If I do the first person videos, I always like to hide the steering wheel and you find that in other. And there's a little tick box there to hide the steering wheel. And then next time we load a car in, that will be gone. So now we're going to briefly talk about vehicles, how you change vehicles, how you add vehicles, and all the good stuff. So you've spawned into a map, and it's probably put this vehicle there by default. So to change this vehicle, you press Escape, and you go to Vehicles at the top. And here we've got a list of the vehicles in BeamNG Drive. So if we wanted the Br Bruckle Bastion, which is one of my favorite cars. We'll go for the Sport GT. If we clicked on Replace Current, that will replace the blue Jeep that we were just in. If we click Spawn New, that will put the new Bruckle Bastion next to it. But we'll replace that one just for now. And just like that, that Jeep has been replaced by the Bruckle Bastion. And here down the bottom, you can see there are a couple of controls. We've got Start, and we can turn the drive mode to comfort, sport, and then that's stability control and TC off. Let's just test that, see if it actually is off. Yeah, so we've got no TC there. Perfect.
So we've spawned a new car, done a nice little donut. What about if we wanted to tow a trailer? Well, you just press escape and you go up to vehicles and then we look down for trailers. And we've got one here. This one's most appropriate. Click that one and click whichever variant that you want. We'll put the one with the armchairs on there. Now, if we clicked replace current, that would replace the Bruckle Bastion that we've just spawned in. So we we'll want to spawn new. And that will appear next to it. There we go. So now we are on the trailer and we press tab and we're back on the car. Tab again. That will go back on the trailer. And you can see there, there's a little arrow in the top right. When we select a different car, it tells us what controls that we have. Click on the trailer. We've got tailgate. O and trailer jack G. We want to tow that trailer with this car, but we don't have a tow on the back. We don't have a tow bar. What are we going to do? Well, we need to configure the vehicle to make sure we've got a tow bar on there. So if you press escape, we can go up to vehicle config, and then if we click on body, that will give us a load of options of things that we can change and get rid of. What we're looking for here is tow. Where are we at? Uh, I just blind tow hitch. There we are. So that's empty at the moment. Click on that. We'll click on tow hitch, and one will appear on the rear of the car. There we go. Dead easy. Now, want to tow this trailer? So driving to oh, stall the engine. So we'll drive into position. You don't have to be super close. Now, by default, to attach the car to that trailer, it is L. Or you can map a button, which is what I've done. If you press the button, that will then move over onto the car. And that's us ready to rock and roll. If the winch doesn't go down there, you're going to have to tab to the trailer and press G for the trailer jack. As you can see, that's lifted up there, lifted the back of the car a bit. Press G again, that will go down. But to drive the car with the trailer on it, you need to be on the car. Stall the engine again. I need to learn how to drive. There we go. So now we've got a trailer towing some nice armchairs. And if you want to detach, just press the button that you mapped for the trailer. There we go. If you wanted to, for example, just do a nice little donut. And then attach the trailer once again. Dead easy. Just drive up. Just get your car near enough there. And press the button. And that is attached. That's the same for HDVs. Whatever you want to tow a trailer with, all the same. Now, what if you wanted to tow a car on a trailer? Well, we need a tab to this trailer. We'll change that one. Uh, we'll go to vehicles. Then we'll go down to trailer and we'll select the one with nothing on it. And then we'll click replace current. That will replace the trailer that had the armchairs on. And we've got nothing on there now. We'll press O to open up the tailgate. Now what I'll do, I'll attach the car to the trailer for this, just to give it a bit more stability. There. Now, we're going to add another car. So you press escape, you go to vehicles. And what if we wanted to take our super duper rally car on a little trip? So we click on whichever car we want, and we click spawn new. And there we go. We've got a Super duper rally car. So what we're going to do. Start the engine. We're going to drive this onto the back of the trailer. If we can do it without stalling it. Go. Will it get up there? Maybe need a little run. It's a bit wide. We're on. Just. That just fits. 
Now put the handbrake on, turn the engine off. Now we can take this car on a little trip. Now we'll tab to the trailer. Press O, raise the rear of that up. Then tab to the Bruckle Bastion at the front. And now we can take this car on a little trip. Dead easy. Happy days. So we've attached the trailer, we've learned how to do all that. What if we want to add some AI to the game just to make it a little bit more fun? Well, we press escape and before we've been going up to the top menu to make the changes, we're going to use this wheel in the center. Now you can do lots and lots of stuff on this wheel, go and have a play around with it. But we want AI down the bottom there and we want to spawn traffic. So if we click on traffic, and then you can spawn police, spawn normal. So we click that one. The game will wait a few moments until all the traffic loads in. So there we've got traffic in. They're all going about their normal business. And you can just head out there and drive into them if you wanted. Or blend them with traffic. Is he waiting for me? He is. Thank you. And there we go, so we've got normal traffic, and they'll behave, oh blimey, like normal traffic would. Don't know what, oh that's that car I spawned earlier on, that's parked up there. So, we've got traffic on. If we wanted to, we can press escape again, we'll go down to AI, and we can click on chase me. And when we do that, all of these cars will chase us and try and stop us. There we go. There we go. Look, he's... Oh, that didn't last long. And they'll just keep hitting you. They will just keep on plowing into us. That texture needs fixed. There. But if we pull down insert, like we did earlier on, that will take us all the way back to where we started. If we let go now, gives us a little bit of a head start. He's going to come in. Got away with that one just. But they'll all try and hit us. Got somebody chasing us behind there. This is actually quite good fun. Now, if we wanted to pause the game at any point, you press J. Then that allows you to make any changes that you want. Now, we've pressed J. If we go to the middle menu again, the wheel, we go to AI, and then we can click Stop. All the traffic will stop. Or we can click on Flee. Now, all of these cars will try and run away now. Click that, then press J again. You'll see that they're no longer trying to hit me. But they will try and run away. Which is good for police chases and that kind of stuff. So he's trying to run away, this dude. Sorry, mate, you're not going to get away. You're going to get J turned. Not J turned. Pit maneuvered. There you go. How do you like that? But he's still going. So there we go. Press pause again by clicking J. Oh, he's just hit him. Trying to run away. Oh, where's he going? Oh, crikey. You can see you can have so much fun. With this mode on BeamNG, it's incredible. Let's just see what this fella does here. He's just going to run right into him. Now press J again. That will pause the physics to enable you to make any changes that you want. And if we go into the middle wheel again, and if we click on AI and click on stop, then all of the AI will just stop what they're doing. Park on the roadside. Now, finally, one other thing that I want to talk about is the UI that you can see on screen. So on mine, you can see in the bottom right, we've got the rev counter, speedometer, tells me what gear I'm in, all that kind of stuff. Now, if you wanted to change the position of this, I'll show you how. And if that's not there, I'm going to show you how to find that as well. Well, we'll do that first of all. So we'll press escape and go to UI apps at the very top. And if we click on add app... 
Now these are all of the things that we can display on screen. So let's have a look. So if we wanted a compass, we click on the compass and you can see that's there up in the top left. Now we can move that round where we want. We can resize or if we didn't want it to be seen in the cockpit, we can click that there. But we do, we're just going to put the compass just there for now. And if we go back to the game, you can see we now have a compass in the middle. Now, if we wanted to move that, we click on UI apps and we go to edit apps. This will edit all of the things that we can see on screen. If you wanted to get rid of it completely, you can press the X, which will do. But if we wanted to move this taco to another part of the screen, for example, we can put it there. And then if we jump back into the game, it's now over there. So really, really easy to configure the UI on screen. And again, this can be resized to huge or small, whatever you want. It's really customizable. And again, you click on add apps to select whichever one you want. And at the bottom, you can click on download more. So hopefully you found this video useful. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm no expert at all. I've pretty much shown you guys what I've learned, which is enough to get by and have some fun. Let me know in the comments if this helps. And remember, if it did, leave a like. And if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. Now, I have set up my own BeamNG Drive server, and I'm going to invite some of you guys in there, and we're going to make some fun videos. I haven't really decided what we're going to be doing yet, but doing a race around the Nordschleife, towing a caravan is definitely on the list. But as always, thanks for watching. Have a great week. See you later. Cheers.